Okay, welcome everybody to my YouTube video entitled uh, Introduction to Coco and Chemsep. And my name is Doug Fry. I'm at the Department of Chemical Engineering at UMBC. And what I wanted to do is, as the title suggests, give you an introduction to this chemical engineering process simulation software called um, COCO and CHEMSEP. And I'm doing this in a multi-part videos. And so right now you're listening to part one, which is sort of basic background material. So if you want to get right into the software, you can go to part two of this series of videos. But I wanted to start off with just some basic background material and tell you a little bit about what COCO actually is and compare it with what's really the standard chemical engineering process simulation software used at least in the United States as the standard software, Aspen. And so I have a little comparison here between um, COCO CHEMSEP and Aspen. And I like to think of COCO and CHEMSEP as really two pieces of software, but you can use CHEMSEP seamlessly within COCO. So in a way, it's really one piece of software. But one interesting thing about COCO CHEMSEP is you can also use CHEMSEP as a standalone piece of software for separation processes, for distillation, absorbers, extractors, strippers, single stage flash, etc. And that makes it kind of interesting for a separation processes course because you can focus solely on the separations part. You don't have to really deal with the whole flow sheet. But again, you can use CHEMSEP within COCO and then have access to an entire flow sheet. But back to this comparison between Aspen and COCO CHEMSEP, probably the most um, striking comparison is the cost. If you're going to pay the full cost of Aspen, which you would have to do if you worked at a company, the full cost, and it's charged per year, so you can't even really purchase Aspen. You have to rent it year by year. And it depends on what um, uh, version of Aspen you, um, you want. But the cost is somewhere between $30,000 and $50,000 per year. And again, that's per year. I think most people in academia don't even know that that's the full price because Aspen has a special very low price in academia, as shown here. So in academia, the price of Aspen is about $2,000 per year, and that's uh, affordable really for any chemical engineering department in the United States or really around the world. And so most chemical engineering departments do have Aspen available to seniors, and seniors, you know, typically use Aspen in the, in the senior process design course, uh, and that's very common. But again, if you move to industry and you have to pay the full cost, you know, it's a, a pretty hefty cost, thirty to fifty thousand dollars per year. Coco Chemsep, on the other hand, you can see in my my uh, comparison table here, is actually free. So you can't beat the price of COCO CHEMSEP. Um, it's free, freely available, and, uh, and that's one of the great features of COCO CHEMSEP. And by the way, COCO stands for Cape Open to Cape Open. And Cape Open, so the Cape part, C-A-P-E, is computer-aided process engineering. And the open part means open source. So... COCO really started um, as an interface standard, the Cape Open interface standard. So the idea was if someone develops a piece of software, say for a plug flow reactor, it's really not much use for people doing process design unless it can be linked to other pieces of software, for example, a piece of software for a distillation column. And to do that, you need a common interface. You need an interface standard, a software interface standard. And 
Cape Open was really that um, interface standard. So the open source part meant that the interface itself was um, uh, freely available and open source, and but not necessarily the software. The software might be free or might be commercial, but um, Cape Open stood for the software interface, this universal software interface. And this whole thing started about 15 years ago. And it was simply the specification of that interface to make um, process simulation much more easily done worldwide with people who wanted to write software for chemical process sy synthesis. So that's kind of how it started. And then the second step, people thought, well, there should be a um, flow sheet environment, a, a Cape Open flow sheet environment. So C-O-F-E, coffee. There should be a piece of software called coffee, Cape Open flow sheet environment for testing purposes. So people could test their Cape Open compliant software to see how well it worked. And so coffee was born, Cape Open flow sheet environment. And it started off really as a testing environment, and, um, and, and, and that was the start of it. But what's happened really in the last 10 years is that a lot of units, process units, have been added to COCO. So it's really become a pretty good s simulation environment all by itself. And you don't have to really add anything. You can just use what's there. And you've got a pretty good free chemical engineering process simulation environment. And that's the current status, a pretty good free environment for um, process simulation. Um, it's certainly good enough for undergraduate students in the senior design course and possibly even beyond that. So again, you can't beat the cost of COCO. It's free. But how about some of the other um, uh, aspects, physical property database. So Aspen, if you look at their website, they claim to have 17,000 species in the physical property database. And of course, that's a number that you can't really check, but you know, probably it's true. And that would make it probably the largest physical property database available. And that's a pretty impressive number. But how about um, COCO? Well, with COCO, if you download the standard package, a standard download of COCO, you get 432 species. And that might sound like a big number, but it's really not a very big number. And I think if you want to be a serious user of COCO, you will have to learn how to add species to the existing database and make your own customized physical property database Fortunately, that's pretty easy to do. And if you do that, you can actually take advantage of the NIST, N-I-S-T, National Institute of Standards and Technology, the NIST physical property database. It's freely available. It includes 7,000 species. And so by using the NIST physical property database, you can expand this um, potentially up to 7,000 species. Obviously, you're simply going to add the ones you're interested in, not all 7,000 of them, because you have to add these species manually. But that really makes um, the COCO ChemSEP software um, fairly useful for really any process design system in terms of the species that are available. But how about the number of process units? Well, I didn't count up the number of process units available in Aspen because that's a little bit hard to do. But um, I'll just uh, summarize by saying there's a large number of process units available in Aspen and a somewhat smaller number of process units available in COCO. But again, you can customize COCO. You can actually add process units yourself and you can create process units and I'll show you how to do that in the second part or third part of this tutorial. You can add process units yourself. You can create your own little piece of software that's a process unit and then connect it to the existing process units in COCO. 
And so you can customize it. In fact, that's kind of the fun part of Cocoa, I think, that you can customize it, create your own um, uh, process units, your own piece of software that describes a process unit. Obviously, you have to find some kind of uh, process design equation that applies or some sort of simple model. And you can use either Excel, MATLAB, or Python to create the software. So I usually use Excel. That works for most things. And I can create um, uh, software for process units that are lacking in Cocoa pretty easily. If it gets very complicated, you probably have to use MATLAB or Python. But Excel works pretty well for 99% of the units that you might want to add. So with those provisos that you may have to add your own species to the physical property database and your own units, your, your own chemical process units if they're missing, then I think that Coco Chemsep is a pretty interesting choice for students in their senior design project in chemical engineering departments across the country and even beyond that in, in industry and in research. I think it has some interesting uh, uh, applications that people can use. And I should also mention that um, the, the CAPE Open uh, uh, standardization specification <coughs> has become fairly standard in all software. So even Aspen is CAPE Open compliant now. So Aspen actually has a CAPE open socket, and they call it a socket because the idea is you can plug anything you, anything you want into that socket. Obviously, it has to be a CAPE open compliant piece of software. But Aspen has a CAPE open socket in it, so you actually can create CAPE open compliant software, um, and you might want to test it in Coco and use it and make sure it works well, make sure it can interface with the physical property uh, thermodynamic database that you're using. And then when it's fully tested, you can actually import it into Aspen and plug it into the Cape Open socket and use it within Aspen. So I think rather than saying Coco Chemsep is an alternative to, to Aspen, it's probably more correct to say that um, it, it is something that complements Aspen. So again, there's a lot, a lot of ways you could use Coco Chemsep. You can use it as a standalone chemical process simulation environment. I think it works pretty well that way, but bear in mind, you probably are gonna have to create your own physical property database, but that's pretty easy to, to do. And you may have to add a couple units that they're missing, some of the um, uh, chemical process units that are more rare. You probably will have to create your own little piece of software for those. But again, I feel that's part of the fun of COCO. Okay, so I would say um, I, I decided to make this video because I noticed on YouTube there were a couple COCO Chemsep tutorials, but they were all in Spanish, actually, and I believe that um, is true because Coco Chemsep might be more of a European phenomena, and Aspen is maybe more of an American uh, or used more in the U.S. Aspen Technologies is a U.S. company, and uh, the software Coco was really developed initially in Europe. Um, and it's more of a European thing. But I think there's a, a, a lot of interesting uses for American universities, and so I think it's good for American universities to be familiar with COCO. Okay, so if you're going to use um, COCO, um, the first thing you have to do is download it. Again, I would say one option is to go to the Chemsep website and just download Chemsep alone. It can be used as a standalone piece of software. And again, I think that's quite interesting for, the, for a separations course. So you, you, you don't get confused by all the rest of the flow sheet. You can focus on the separations part. But you can also go to the COCO website and download COCO, and that will actually include ChemSEP as one of the units that gets downloaded. 
So let me just briefly, before we end part one here, let me briefly show you uh, the Cape Open website. So you can go to the Cape Open website, or it's actually the COCO website, which is Cape Open to Cape Open. And if you click on the download part, I'll click on it here, you can download COCO. And when you download it, I would select um, all the to download, all, <coughs> excuse me, to download all the add-ins. So download the um, Excel add-in, the MATLAB add-in, the Python add-in, etc. Because, because again, that's kind of the the fun of Coco is to create your own process units, and and then you you, you can connect them to the other existing units in Coco. So you download Coco from the Coco website, and then after you download it you will have to probably go to your computer, and I'm doing it here, and go to the Program Files folder and find COCO in the Program Files, and then create shortcuts to your desktop for coffee, and coffee is the main thing you're going to be using, so you create a shortcut to your desktop with, with uh, for coffee. Again, that's the Cape Open flow sheet environment. And then two other things that are useful to create shortcuts to your desktop are configure corn. So corn is the Cape Open reaction numerics piece of software. And it's interesting to, to configure that outside of corn and then you use corn. And also configure T. So T is the thermodynamics for engineering applications. And again, it's useful to configure that outside of the T software. And so there's a separate piece of software called Configure T. And as far as um, Coffee 64 and Coffee, so regular Coffee is the 32-bit version of Coffee, and Coffee 64 is the 64-bit version of Coffee. I've actually found the 64-bit version of coffee to be a little bit less reliable. Although, you know, almost all uh, operating systems today are the 64-bit system, um, I, I found coffee 64 to be slightly unstable. And so I would recommend just using regular coffee. And you might notice an interesting theme here. All the software in Coco is... Uh, named after some type of food. So you, you have cocoa and coffee and tea and corn. And there's also couscous. And I guess cork is an, a, an exception. It's not a food, but there's cup and etc. So it, it kind of gives you the flavor of the fun, um, the fun part of cocoa. At least you get to say all these fun words like cocoa and coffee. When you're using Aspen, I find... You also say words, but they tend to be kind of uh, X-rated words because you're frustrated. You don't, you don't get to say a lot of fun words when you're using Aspen. But some people do like Aspen. Okay, I'm going to stop part one of this uh, video right here. It was kind of the introductory material. And if you're interested in this, you can go to part two, and we'll start using um, Coco in part two.